Welcome to Costa's The Other Side with me, Costa. It's a lovely Sunday and uh, we're glad you could join us yet again uh, on another episode. The COVID-19 fourth wave is being anticipated and I hope that you're sticking to the five golden rules of always masking up and always social distancing, uh, staying home and watching, you know, Diamond TV. Before we get to introduce my guests on the show this evening who have similar inclinations and obviously similar interests in media, and filmmaking. Uh, let's get straight into our thoughts of the week. The first one comes from William James who says, act as if you do what makes a difference as it does. Act as if what you do makes a difference and it does. Camilla Kimball says, you do not find the happy life, you make it. So you do not go out there to find a happy life. It is you that makes your life happy. Introducing my first guest on the show this evening, uh, a media uh, icon who's been into print media broadcast is reported for the BBC, uh, CNN. Uh, many know him as a sports journalist, but he writes in uh, all sorts of segments. Uh, a family friend and an elder brother, uh, the man behind Studio Ken and so many other productions. Kennedy Gondo is my first guest on the show this evening. Kennedy, this interview has been long in the waiting. Good evening and welcome to the show. Good evening and it's good to be here. Um, I'll choose deliberately not to follow the script and uh, my producers would need to ignore or forgive me for that because there's so much to talk about. Uh, first disclaimer, I think you have to be warned not to call me Kafupi on this. <laughs> <laughs> You've just called yourself that. <laughs> yes, but, but, but you get tempted uh, to do that. Um, wh where do we start from, really? Um, I know many people have interviewed you, but... Um, Let's start from, from, from your love for writing and, and really broadcast pieces. What does it take to really single out what makes a good story? I think different people, different journalists will give you different explanations. Yeah. But for me, I look at uh, a story in the eyes of the majority or the masses. What do they enjoy the most? What is it that they can relate with? Mm. Uh, and of course, with the advent of social media, people have got different interests. But I would want a situation where after you read my story, you listen to my piece or you watch something that I've done, there's a positive take-home message. But along the way, you mix this and that depending on who you're catering for. Mm. Our current media landscape or journalism is littered with political headlines uh, and, and what many of us would describe as bubblegum news because it, it, it doesn't really stay the test of time as would feature stories or documentary pieces. Why do you think that is so? A number of factors. Uh, from experience, I think uh, the bulk of it is driven by the media institution owners because they're looking, they're first of all in media because they want to make money. So they're looking for stories that are going to uh, bring them that money. And as a result uh, of that, we then uh, churn out what uh, we think will please yeah. uh, the media owners. So if you're working for a newspaper or a TV station and you know that my boss likes this kind of news, or over a period, what sales is this? That's what you'd be inclined to. But, but is, it, is it, apart from the media owners, is it not that this is what the readers want? A bit of both. Mm. Uh, the readers are given what we write, mm. but the readers also give us an idea of what we want. Mm. And um, that's where you find, uh, find a very thin line uh, between what the readers want and what you also want to give mm. them. Because uh, if you're going to talk about uh, Zambia right now, the most interesting uh, thing happening in Zambia after the change of government is what the UPND government is doing. Mm. And uh, in there, you find people calling each other names or one mm. another names. So <laughs> go to social media. Uh, instead of people addressing the real issues, mm. they'll go for name calling. Mm. So it's a bit of both. Mm. Being in a newsroom, obviously, those on the political desk get the front pages, they get the headliner stories on TV or radio. And, and, and that 
creates a star journalist. You've always shied away from, from politics. I know this. From what you, you'd rather not report you know, politics. You've stuck to sports, human interest, even entertainment. Why? It goes back to my satisfaction. Yeah. That's what I find interesting. To me, I find people from the compounds, I'm a product of a yeah. compound myself, to be much more real, much more fulfilling. Mm. Politicians, uh, without pointing <laughs> <laughs> any name or a finger at anybody, I feel that they are plastic. Today, one can stand on a political platform campaigning against the government. They get appointed into the government. They change mm. uh, their language and their narrative altogether. They get fired. They go back to the opposition. So there's no consistency. But if you're going to find a guy who's a boxer in George Compound, where I grew up from, mm. uh, they're going to be a boxer throughout their, their life. I started off myself as a sports reporter, went mm. to the political desk. I did some uh, wonderful stories there. But if you ask me today, what is it that I remember the most? It's a political, I mean, non-political stories yeah. that I did, entertainment stories that I did. And from there, yeah. I met a lot of friends, which uh, friends I still relate with up yeah. to now. So uh, we can't all be political journalists at the end of yeah. the day. There has to be someone catering even for non-political people. In a short while, we'll talk about your, your most recent project on Studio Ken. Uh, many find you controversial, which some of us who know you personally don't think you are. But... Uh, uh, we, we, we are in a week of World AIDS Day, and you know where this is leading to. Um, uh, the, 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 the limits and, and lengths or depth that a journalist can go to, the famous circumcision story in relation to, to AIDS pandemic then, your late good friend Dr. Manasa Pui, Let, let's talk about that story. So what happened is uh, somewhere around 2008, first of all, when I was in secondary school, I was uh, the president of the anti-AIDS club yeah. at Kamala Secondary School where I went. So I have had a passion for issues to do with health, uh, health but particularly HIV and AIDS. Mm. So 2008, a research is done by the World Health Organization saying that um, people that are circumcised have got 60% uh, uh, chances uh, more of uh, not uh, less rather of uh, getting the virus that causes AIDS. So 40% uh, you are at risk. So then I called Dr. Manasseh Piri, may so rest in peace, saying, Doc, I want to do a story on this research that has uh, been done. So he says, okay, interesting story. I said, I would like to interview you. He says, but Kennedy, before you interview me, have you been circumcised yeah. by yourself? I said, no, I've not been circumcised. So he says, why can't you do a story based on your own experience? Mm. I said, ah, sounds interesting. But because I was going to record my, uh, myself, it was going to be in the media, I needed to consult uh, my family. Mm. And my family were more than happy that I'd taken such an idea to them. Mm. So I get back to Dr. Manasseh Piri. He's excited. We arrange how we were going to do the circumcision. I have my recorder ready. Uh, by the way, I also got in touch with the BBC, who were very, very interested mm. in the story. So there I was, early in the morning, when we go to YWCA. I mic myself and... The process starts the rest of history. And <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> the famous scream. <laughs> <laughs> of course, when I was injected. <laughs> Don't ask me where. <laughs> <laughs> some, some would say, why go to an extra length to really, was that a publicity stunt? Uh, what was the impact of that story? The impact of that story was twofold. I have uh, very good friends, uh, Luvale friends, mm. that were extremely annoyed by me because um, Luvales and as many other tribes go through that uh, when you are passing from... Symbol of, of, of graduating into manhood anyway. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So one of my friends comes to me, uh, drunk, you know him, I want to his name. <laughs> <laughs> so he says, you, you chap, why did you have to do that? For us, the pain is what makes us to be a man. Yeah. There you were like uh, giving birth, <laughs> being injected <laughs> with uh, local anesthesia, and then you, you do that. So... Uh, behind the scenes, I had so many journalist friends uh, that called me saying, ah, but where can we go for this and so on and so forth. Musicians calling me. Mm. Sometimes for a story to be impactful, it has to be told from one's experience. Mm. Nothing beats experience. So other than those uh, friends that obviously were joking, mm. the impact was great. Yeah. Journalistically, I got uh, uh, nominated for the CNN African Journalist of the Year. I was in the finals lost to Hope Watch in Nono, who's uh, in Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it uh, brought it its own benefits. But for me, the satisfaction was not only that I went through it, but how many people I inspired, both secretly 
and, um, and uh, publicly. And for all I know, up to now, it's the only story where someone has had to go through such a process and they broadcast it to, to the world. Let's talk about your project, Studio Kid. What, 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 what necessitated the birth of the fact that um, you initially love, obviously, the writing, um, you've gone to do a lot of documentaries, you now do online pieces for the BBC, the Studio Ken concept. Studio Ken, um, there are a lot of lies that people tell um, about other people in their little corners in bars. Studio Ken is an opportunity for people that are interviewed to tell their stories based on the lies, misconceptions, truths, half-truths that people say. I think that is a summary of it all. Mm. So if I come to you and you've been accused of being a thief, I'll ask you based on what people say about you. And it's an opportunity for you to clarify. I think there's a lot of peer in our journalism. Mm. So you go to someone you're interviewing, almost apologizing before you ask them the question. Mm. But behind that, people ought to know what the truth is. And Studio Ken gets born Last year, um, my former boss at the BBC kept on pressuring me, Kennedy, you need to start something. You've got a name in Zambia. Can you start this? Can you start that? Kept on dithering, postponing. One day he calls me from England, Farai Mungazi, who you've met. He calls me from England. He says, I've opened this channel. It's in your name. Let's work on it. And the rest, I live with you. Started recording <laughs> one or two hits, mm. <laughs> infamous interviews. Mm. And it is what it is. Yeah. Uh, people have come to like it based on the way I approach matters. Obviously, mm. you have people that will not like it. Some, some have given you a bashing, and um, uh, we are in the media space, but at times, uh, I know you are one of the type that doesn't love social media attention, but you have to be in the media. Mm. And uh, some interviews have gone so deep that they've affected most of us, mm. because family decisions have to be made. <laughs> uh, how do you select the guests? Because uh, take it or leave it, today's social media and journalism is about who gets more clicks and who gets more likes. Is that the essence of, of, of Studio Ken? What is the objective behind it? Absolutely no, in terms of answering the most clicks. It's not about that necessarily. And you know, when you are in journalism, you do a story and everyone is praising you that you've done a good story. I think there's something wrong. When you do a story and everyone is condemning you, Again, in my view, there's something wrong. When you do a story and people are praising, others are condemning, then you know the message is being sent. So it's not about likes. And I can tell you for a fact that I've had so many people calling me uh, to give us an example, wanting to be on Studio Ken, to be asked uh, the kind of questions that I like. Now, you have to see at some point, because certain people come to you wanting to be on Studio Ken because they've got their own agendas. Mm -hmm. uh, behind all that happens, there are certain things because of sources, confidentiality that mm. I cannot divulge. But at the end of the day, some of the interviews that have been done on Studio Ken and people think Kennedy were too harsh. Mm. I wish they were there when the cameras get switched off uh, after the interview because we laugh with those people. Mm. Even before, we laugh with those people. I mean, just to give an example of the Mao Sampa interview that we did. People were so upset that I did that interview. In the bedroom? In the bedroom. Mm. When we arrived at Mao Sampa's house, he says, I wanted to do it uh, in the, uh, around the outside, <coughs> in the lawn. So he says, no, no, no. I think let's get uh, into the house. We do it in the living room. We get into the house. And then he says, no, no, no. I don't like the setup here. Let's go to my, my bedroom. I said, but why do you want me to do it from your bedroom? He says, Kennedy, when I was doing my yoga uh, sessions on Boba TV, I was using my spare bedroom. And people came on social media bashing me. They don't know that I've got a good nice looking bedroom. So the reason I want to do it from there is because I want to show people that that's not where I sleep. Mm. I mean, which journalist would refuse that? <laughs> it's an exclusive it's into an the exclusive. inside. Yeah, so I can give so many <coughs> examples, but uh, Miles was okay for me to share mm. this. Other uh, things, I mean, people have come to know about mm. some of the infamous interviews that I've done, not to bash people, but I think uh, things have to be put and caught for who Because of those interviews, mm. some have called you unethical, some have called you gender insensitive and, 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 and so on. Um, does that, how does that make you feel? To give up, to stop, you know, Studio Ken, uh, all in all? Um, really, uh, how would you describe the preparation and, and, and the professionalism that is echeloned around these interviews? Uh, the people that bash me don't know me at a personal level. Yeah. And not everyone will know me at a personal level. You're privileged to know me at a personal level. 
uh, one of the people that I'm closest to is my daughter. Mm. So that answers the issue of being gender insensitive. And of course I'm married. Some of the closest friends that I've got are <coughs> female. So before certain interviews are done, I'll run that by them. Mm. Okay? And they say, look, this can be done. Not everyone would agree. But to call me gender insensitive is not knowing Kennedy. One of the closest people that I've got being an orphan is my own sister. Mm. And my sister is very, very supportive. So I can't be gender insensitive. But people, uh, based on what they see on social media, who come and bash you, just based on a 10-minute thing, without knowing what would Your have style of questioning problem. is also something that people have a problem with. Again. The, the Clifford interview, for example. <laughs> <laughs> Look, uh, that's being a bit hypocritical. Mm. Someone would watch her talk, mm. and they'll be very happy. When the current president, uh, uh, His Excellency Hakainde Hichilema, appeared on her talk, everyone was applauding how Stephen Saka handled him and how he handled the, the questions uh, himself. Okay? People were applauding. Put Kennedy, not exactly that I'm Stephen Saka, or not that Studio Ken is that talk, everyone then would be condemning. There's a bit of hypocrisy there. But again, like I said, I understand these things. I'm into a space now where anyone can have an opinion about you. And some of the most noisemakers are people that have no idea who Kennedy is, have no idea mm -hmm. what goes on behind Studio Ken. But the one thing that I can tell them is that everything that goes on there is not acted. When I invite Waino, <laughs> for instance, <laughs> to be interviewed, <laughs> you have to sit a certain distance from him because you don't know what he's going to say and what he's going to do. And how, how did that series of <laughs> interviews end, really? Uh, especially uh, when he asked, why my Shakongo? Why not you? <laughs> Look, Innocent goes back to what I said again. Yeah. I like people that are real. Yeah. What you see is what you get. Yeah. He will not pretend that he speaks fluently in English. He will express himself in any way that he can. Mm. And he'll tell you, ah, if you're meaning what you're asking me, I can't comprehend, I can't break it down mm. to you if it's economics. But to answer your question, it went on very, very well. Mm. I liked the character. Of course, there were certain moments where I was a bit scared. But again, that's what people ask mm. or say about him. He's Congolese, he bleaches and all that. Mm. So I'll put it to you. But once you tell me, look, I don't bleach, I'm not Congolese, unless I've got empirical evidence to show that you, you bleach, I would have given you an opportunity to answer the questions. Due to time, we need to squeeze this in. Um, sports. You, you, you've reported sports, and in particular football, for a long time. And um, you, you've become influential to know administrators, players uh, in themselves. Uh, through you, I've met guys like Abedi Pele you know, from Ghana. You, you're, you're good friends with the Pete and Doros. So, so many guys. But, but there's one thing that is very interesting in that you never... Uh, bow to your professional ethics to keep that friendship. And, and I know uh, you were not in good books with Carlo at some point. You are now back together. I know for a fact that you're not in very good books with, with Andrew Kamanga, the current FA president. Again, due to your stance as a journalist on, on, on football. How, how do you marry and balance the two? Again, people feel there's some hidden agenda behind Kennedy. Right now, uh, we are working on a documentary to celebrate Zambia's win of the Africa Cup in 2012. Mm -hmm. Next year, it will be 10 years. Not a lot of people remember that it will be 10 years next year. Mm -hmm. When I released a few tidbits of the interviews that I've been doing that are strictly uh, current affairs, people said that I've got an agenda. I have no agenda whatsoever. The only agenda that I've got is to tell a football story. And whether it's Costa sitting on the other side as FA president and that Costa is my friend, a line has to be drawn. You have to respect me for the work that I do. And I'll tell you, look, if you cross this line, I'll not look at you as my friend. I'll look at you as a person who deserves uh, scrutiny. If the results are not coming, like we've been uh, to the Africa Cup three times, I forget about the person that is on the other side. It's about talking to the issues. Mm -hmm. So Kalusha, we started off as friends at some point. Uh, things happened where we're not getting on because he was FA president. He needed journalists to put him under scrutiny. If the same is done uh, on the current president who I've known for a long time and we're going to talk to football, I don't care, and I say this respectively, what you think about me. Because on the other side, I'm not the FA president, I'm the journalist. And on this side, you have to respect that I'm a journalist. So it's all part of our game. Uh, you don't have permanent friends, you don't have permanent enemies. And if you're going to do things wrong, Costa, even you, we are family, we are friends. Once you uh, take on public office, at some point you forget about the friendship and just talk to the issues. Mm -hmm. Not until you leave. If you think Kennedy is being unfair, leave. Pave way for others that will need that scrutiny. 
It doesn't start and end with Kalusha. It started with the likes of uh, Teddy Mulonga. Uh, may so rest in peace uh, of uh, Evaristo Kasunga and so many others. I'm a taxpayer. Don't forget about that. Mm. The Football Association of Zambia is run using taxpayers' money. And I'm a journalist. So if I'm going to ask you that you said if you don't go to the Africa Cup or reach the quarterfinals, not apportioning any name to anyone, we don't go to the Africa Cup, I remind you, and then you say, hey, Kennedy, you're not being fair to me. If we have not gone to the Africa Cup a record three times, no one is that. But they're including the people that are running football. The they're honest with themselves. Yeah. The happy. unfortunate part about our football is that it's, well, world, world over. It, it's so big that it's, it's, it's huge politics in itself, and it's dividing everyone, even the media, is divided in camps. Which is sad, because football, as a sport, is supposed to unite people. When Zambia won the Nations Cup, I think for the first time in a long time, I never heard Zambia explode. Just when Stopil and Sunzu scored that penalty, the country literally exploded. You didn't care who your neighbor was, who your enemy was. You didn't care which political party they belonged to. Everyone came together. And we walked to the airport to come the national team. That's what football is supposed to, to be. But also, along the way, and I say this respectfully, there are some of us in the media that may not be professional. A trip means a lot to you because the FA has put you on a trip. A replica jersey means a lot to you. Talk time means a lot to you. So as opposed to looking at the issues, I mean, when you talk to the journalists, some of them are not saying they are for the current executive, okay? But when you talk to them, and you see the things that they write, and you ask them, Have you? Just tell me something about not going to the Africa Cup. Mm. Are you happy? Are you happy with the way? Ah, no, 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 mm. no. But there are people there that share your opinion. Why is it that when you are writing, you take on a complete different view? So there are so many factors, but I think also mm. there's a lot of intimidation mm. coming from the FA. I know of stories of journalists. I've been a victim myself under Kalusha, under the current administration, where if you write things that the FA is not happy with, they'll deny you accreditation. Yeah. And accreditation enables you to go and cover a match. By you covering matches, you get money. So to avoid you being denied accreditation, you become a peer person for them in mm. order for you to be able to feed your family. I always do this to my guests uh, being the other side, is, is trying to get the public to know them on the other side. Um, wh why do you have this... Um, what is the word I'm looking for? You, 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 you are so intrigued or you... Why do you love the Congolese? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I, I know even in terms of music. Let, let, let me not even ask you what your favorite music is. Uh, but maybe let's say of Luambo, Orchestra Mangeri, which is your favorite hit? <laughs> As I was coming, yeah. I was listening to... I don't know if it's the correct pronunciation. I was listening to... Early in the morning, yeah. Bakanja by <laughs> Fali, and then um, uh, Franco. Yeah. And then as your, something to do with AIDS, Sida, yeah. uh, popularly known as Sida. Why do I love the Congolese? They are some of the most real people. <laughs> some of the most real people I've ever met. A Congolese who live Kinshasa today. Mm -hmm. In the next 10 years, he wants to go to... America. For whatever reason, America is like a heaven for yeah. the Congolese. Like the Nigerians. He will come here, Costa, all he's got is clothes on him. He'll start running a barber shop, buy a machine, mm. and he'll work hard. Some of the most interesting Congolese I've met are people that run a barber shop. Where are they drinking their beer from? Smartly dressed, smelling good, intercontinental. Mm. In the next five years, well, that guy that was cutting your hair has gone to South Africa. Before realizing, no, no, that guy moved to Australia. Ten years later, He's in America. in America, enterprising people, mm. hardworking people with a very interesting uh, history, starting with King Leopold, the things I've been through, uh, through Patrice Lumumba, Mobutu Seseseko, Kukumbendo, Wazapanga, and the rest is, is history. I love the music mm. because it's there. Uh, anyone And you've traveled it. there, your, 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 your good friend <laughs> or your, 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 your elder brother Moise, <laughs> no. uh, you've done stories. I remember watching a piece on CNN of two Pueso, <laughs> Mazembe, and the famous <laughs> dancing. The, 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 the goalkeeper. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, um, Robert uh, Kidiaba. <laughs> Muteba Kidiaba. Mm. Again, someone is dancing. We like dancing uh, because uh, we like Congolese music, but someone is working. Mm. Like you are sitting there interviewing me, like I'm answering to these questions. We are working. So, what I've come to learn uh, uh, with the Congolese is that. In their struggle, there's adversity. In their struggle, there's determination. 
to succeed, regardless of the country's problems. Mm -hmm. Talk about football. The French national team, they are Congo people with Congolese roots there. Um, uh, what's the, the basketballer, the legendary uh, basketballer for Yeah, mm -hmm. Congolese, okay. Um, Nobel Peace uh, Prize winner, I think two years ago. Congolese, everywhere you go, you will find Congolese. But when you look at their country, it's full of problems, but they, they keep on fighting, they keep on fighting and keep on giving. When all is said and done, I mean, um, your, your plus, you know, minus two decades of journalism has exposed you to so many things, highs, lows and so on. Would you say you would do it again or what is missing on your bucket list? What is missing on my bucket list is uh, owning my own radio station, mm. talk radio station. Mm. People like talking. There are issues that are affecting Zambians, not politics. Mm. There are real issues that are affecting Zambians. So that is obviously my bucket list. And I've traveled uh, a few places. God has been gracious. I would love to continue traveling. Mm. And also showing people that uh, where you think there's nothing that can be done, there's actually a story. You asked me about Clifford Mlenga. Clifford Mlenga got expelled from camp in 2012 when Zambia won eventually the Africa Cup. Studio Ken is born last year. There was an eight-year period in mm. between. There were journalists that went to cover the Africa Cup then. It took Studio Ken, and I say this with humility, respectfully. But I thought there was a story that needed to be told. What was that story? Sit down, Clifford, and say, what happened? When that story was told on Studio Ken, I remember the next, the following two weeks, the was back the papers, pages. Yep. Uh, is it true that you finally left Arsenal and are now <laughs> supporting you know, Liverpool? My heart <laughs> is red and white. <laughs> Arsenal colours. Mm. Every time I go to England, I go to watch Arsenal. I've met Arsene Wenger before. I've met some Arsenal players before. I don't know how many times I've watched Arsenal. I've been in touch with uh, David Dean, mm. the person who recruited Arsene Wenger, and then his son later on started managing Thierry Henry. Never, ever. I think with Arsenal, it's not just about the results. It's the philosophy behind Arsenal. Pretty much like the Lusaka Dynamos mm. of uh, back in the day. Hanif Adams starts Lusaka Dynamos using player, players from Chongwe Secondary School. Not uh, properly paid. Just a passion. They would beat the likes of Power Dynamo, Zesco, name them. It's the same with Arsenal. He gets a player, Asin Wenger then, he gets a player for £150,000 uh, from Ivory Coast, sells him for £19 million. Pounds. That's what football is supposed to be. So never ever, managers may change <laughs> forever this, Arsenal. But the results are not so good. The results are not so good. Football is like that. Barcelona. The results are not so good. You go through phases and you bounce back. I, I'm winding up because I was going to go now to, to ask about the Ballon d'Or. But thank you so much for, for, for having this interview. It should have been one hour. Uh, I'll come on to Studio Ken next. No problem. Thank you very much. Uh, although I cannot handle... <laughs> no, I'll put you on the spot. People need to know Costa, the other side. Not the Clifford <laughs> Blender questions. No, I'll find something interesting, definitely. Thank you so much. We've been chatting with Kennedy Godwin, a friend, a brother, and obviously a fellow scribe and journalist. After the break, we get into the world of David uh, you know, Kazadi and the Kazadi film Empire. Let's get to find out uh, what is up to next. <laughs>